Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk here. I would have loved to present you this talk, uh, Life in Amsterdam, but it can't be. So, live here from Zoom. So, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, based in Switzerland. I work for Artis. We help customers making health data agile. That's why also we are heavily focused around standards like from HL7 in Switzerland and also international IAG. My background is from in computer science and that's I also got some experience working with all the different standards. And I'm glad to present you this today. So what I like to show you is how the CDA, the clinical document standard, can relate to fire documents, what are the differences, um, how can we map, if we have existing CDA um, documents, this into the fire world, different approaches, how we can map that, and how we can, for example, also just validate the CDA document with the fire uh, CDA logical models, extra, extract fire pass, or use fire pass to extract information from CDA, or use the fire mapping language. So we have a huge ecosystem in this space. And when we talk about documents, they uh, have universal characteristics, which we see um, all over, not only in the fire world. So we have a persistence, you want to store documents, you have a governance over it, a stewardship, um, you can authenticate documents, um, they are complete together and they're also human readable. So in 2005, HL7 standardized uh, document architecture, and they are called clinical document, CDA, and this was, a, uh, was based on the V3 standard, and this gave us a possibility to structure documents, like here you see a referral letter, letter from Switzerland, so you have metadata, like a patient, an author, you have then a title of a document and different sections. This is called a level A, level one characterizations. Then it goes down that you can code these sections also a level two. And in the end, you could also already structure clinical information. So, and there were quite some implementations also here in the Europe, we have different uh, projects. Yeah, our neighbors in Austria, for example, they have seven different implementation guides which are productive and running. There are projects in Denmark, in Italy, in Switzerland. So we have quite some existing projects and implementations. But then the question is, how do you implement such CDA projects? CDA itself is an XML-based standard, so it has also a XSD schema. And today's programming languages can quite good work with it. In the beginning, a few years ago, that was also quite difficult. So when we specify CDI projects, mainly here in Europe, we have an open source tool, Art Decor, where you can uh, profile the different CDI projects to your implementation guide. There are also other toolings. Um, like MDHT is a model driven health tools open source project where you can do also this modeling. So one way of implementing then the CDI projects was that you use the extract of this tooling and generate code for working it, with it. We tried this, for example, with the eHealth connector. This is a Swiss open source project was first using this MDHT approach. Afterwards, now we switched to Art Decor templates. There are also simpler approaches. You just can get data, for example, with XPath and take that data out of the clinical documents. So this brings us now back. The whole standards have, uh, have an evolution and now we have FIRE, Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. So FIRE is fast for implementers. Why? We have a huge community, like you see here at the Dev Days. It is based on modern IT standards. 
it changed also the game with the licensing issue. Um, we have reference implementations available, test servers, validation tool, publishing tools. So this brings up the question, how can this be applied also to implement CDA with this FIRE tool stack? Especially we live in a world where we have both standards, both standards from are from HL7 and we need ways how these standards can coexist and how we can um, map information from one standard to the other. So FIRE has also a concept of documents. You cannot only use um, uh, the API, so, so there is a specification for documents. Uh, Rick has, uh, I think yesterday, also showed in the presentation how they work. So you have a concept that you have a composition resource in a bundle. This is equivalent to a CDA header, more or less, the narrative. And you can also sign these documents. They can be authenticated. So you have the ba same basic principles as a CDA document. This is a very short representation. So we have a metadata in the composition rules and a tester, different sections, and then you have um, a reference to the different entries, which differ now then in the fire world, because here are, there are resources in the clinical document world that would be then the clinical statements. So, you see they both have a clinical document focus. So FIRE documents and CDA both have the human readability approach. We have, can both represent them. We have this difference that in CDA we have clinical statements, we have resources in FIRE. CDA uses a templating approach to make a CDA document more specific to your use case. In FIRE terms, we are talking about profiles. The markup is a bit different. Um, and there are also some more differences, and this is already mentioned directly in the standard. So when we now want to map between these different document types, um, we can do this on different levels. So this CDA level one, which is just metadata and text actually, we can quite easily map to bundle and composition. The CDA level two, this fixes the sections in the CDI document, maps also easy to bundle on composition. It gets more difficult now on the third level where we have these structured entries. So we have to map these clinical statements, which can be in different templates, then map to the specific fire resources entries. And what we have seen in our project is that level one and level two can be made quite generic but on the level three, so when you go down to each of these different um, CDA entries you have in your document, it gets quite difficult. So you need this to do on a template level for each different temple, rather than you can take just say, I make a general conversion tool from uh, CDA to FIRE. You have already in the standard some guidance um, how to map between CDA and FIRE. You see this in the resources tab for the composition. You have a mappings tab here, and you see here afterwards how a mapping can be done. So there is a composition resource, and I have, for example, the tester, and in a clinical document, this would then map to the authenticator, legal authenticator. So um, there are different strategies possible how to map. And I don't think I have the complete list here. That's the mapping strategies. I have already a look at it and I would like to go with you here now through a different part before we focus then on the, on the mapping approach with the logical model and the mapping language. So the first approach is actually you do no mapping. You use the CDA just as a document as it is, but you use the fire architecture that you store it on a fire server. So you use the document as an attachment and then um, embed it in a document reference. And then you can add some additional metadata that you can find the document 
how we would do it like, for example, in a XDS environment where you just store the CDI document. So here you have the CDI document. You cannot do some, with something with the content inside, but you would have the CDI document available on a fire server and available as a whole through the REST API. So then different um, approaches were started. In the US, there was a huge project. They have the consolidated CDI their version of the CDI documents, and they started to making an implementation guide um, uh, for CCDA, and they, they started also to do first mappings based on the fire mappings language for this CCDA documents. We took that approach up here also in Switzerland. So, um, because for our, especially e-medication, uh, CDI documents, we wanted also to use equivalent FHIR documents, and we started also for creating such maps here. So the approach is here that you have a CDI logical model. We will go lately on into this model. Then you define maps, um, how the CDI uh, document maps to equivalent fire bundles and entries, and you have a mapping engine which uses these maps and can convert then the document to fire, and if you have the map back to in the other direction too. So the fire logical model, this is a description of CDI from the fire world. This doesn't give you an API, but it allows afterwards to use the whole fire a development and uh, other stack uh, together with the tools to use CDA in this environment. So this is then an example of an instantiation of such a map. There is a textual version and afterwards you can also convert it to the structure map fire resource. There are also other mapping approaches. So on this presentation we will focus on the CDI logical model and the fire mapping language, but um, there are also other strategies. So uh, Microsoft presented at the last HL7 connector on their approach. They are using handlebar templates to convert between CDI documents and uh, fire bundles. And there is also Google, which presented there, uh, more focused on the V2 area than the CD area, uh, but they also presented a mapping approach for converting. So this is a huge topic. Uh, we'll focus here now on the logical model fire mapping language approach, but please keep in mind that's not the only solutions. There are other solutions also available. So going back, um, how we can map this different um, uh, this CDA world into the fire world. Um, I want to give you a short introduction of this CDA logical model, what we can use it for, and because it's the basis not only for mapping, we can also already start using other fire tools with the CDA logical model. In the fire world, you have the conformance resource, the structure definition, and with this, you can describe uh, all information like the resources, the data type, uh, etc. And the whole fire specification is also defined in terms of this structure definition resource. So you can look up the structure definition, how the patient is defined, how the practitioner is defined, etc. And this structure definition can now also be used to define any arbitrary structure that is kind of like a tree. And the only condition is that the primitive types have also to be uh, the same as defined in the fire specification. So with these logical models, we can describe now any existing content for example, there is a logical model for V2, but there is also now a logical model from CDA. And then we have uh, can use them afterwards in the FHIR world. This logical model was first 
presented at the development days 2016. So you see how fast the time moves. Um, it is uh, available on GitHub on HL7 um, and the source. And then afterwards, the IG publisher generates this model. So the CDI core is an implementation guide. And it supports then also the CCDI on fire implementation guide and also other mapping projects. It has no formal release yet, but it's quite, uh, quite stable at the moment, I would say. And what you see now inside this logical model, you see diff, um, you have a representation of all the data types, elements, classes, and we have from CDI documents. So those of you who are deeply in CDI, you will recognize all the different data types. Um, for example, we have the basic HL7v3, any data type. And what you see here now is a representation, how this looks in a structure definition for this logical model. So you see the differential, and then you see the uh, concept descriptor type, which is derived from the any type, uh, which adds the additional information, which that doesn't have from the any type. And you see then the concept equivalent, which restricts the CD type because it doesn't use the qualifier. And so are all, all data types described we use in a CDI document. Equivalent are also the CDI classes defined. So for each CDI class, we have a corresponding description in the logical model. As an example here, the clinical document, which has attributes like a class code, like a mode code. And then the different elements like the down to the author and data enterer. So there are a few peculiarities or specialities when you are working with logical models because a CDI document or actually any arbitrary XML model doesn't look like the same like a XML representation in FIRE. So for example, we have not only the value attribute in an XML like in a FIRE resource, but we have a use field. You can specify this with the representation in this log logical definitions. Um, we have element text a lot in XML documents. Um, we have also to specify this in the logical model that there is a different representation. We have then also uh, other narratives. So in CDA, the con uh, has a different markup language than uh, we use in the FIRE documents. So FIRE documents have XHTML. And when we want to describe a CDI markup, we have a text, we have also described this. So the summary, we have a CDI logical model. This is a description of a CDA in the FIRE world. No API, um, there are also no FIRE resources. We have no query possibilities, but we can use that now with the existing FIRE tooling. So first, what you can do is you can validate if a CDA document is valid against that logical model. Um, if you followed Graham's presentation uh, a few hours before, you have seen he presented the Java validator, which comes with the standard itself from the site and which he and others have developed. So when you execute this validator, you can now specify the implementation guide. So I, from this package here, this is the logical model, and then the fire validator will start and it will validate your CDI document. So this will give you already an indication if this is a valid CDI document against the logical model. There are some limitations. So currently it's not all V3 terminology support, uh, terminology support um, is possible to validate, but I think with the next releases, um, this will come. The next step, what you can do is that you 
can now use this logical model and you can convert your CDA document from a XML to a logical model JSON representation. This looks a bit strange. So now you have now a CDI document, which is in a JavaScript object notification representation, but it can help you also to visualize a bit how this logical model works. And what this conversion now with, the, but that's depending on the Java validator is also doing because this is code, which is in the Java core library. It translates you the um, CDI markup which is specific here. So you have a list item translates you automatically to XHTML. So you have an unordered list and list item. And you see also that even the references between the structure text and the content in the narrative text is kept. So the next thing you can do and you can use is you can use FirePass. So FirePass is a extraction language um, similar to XPath in the XML world, but specific made for fire. And this allows you to express terms in the hierarchy and filtering and selecting out data. You can do this here also now. So also the validator supports that you can execute FirePath expression against any content. So you specify in this case also the logical model because otherwise the validator doesn't know that this is a CDI document and you can now execute a FirePass expression. So here you see if I specify record target, patient role, patient name, given data string, he goes down into the tree and selects me uh, the output here, so which is Henry. This is now not very performant because you have to start up the validator. It goes as to load the packages and everything. So when you use this JSON representation, we um, discussed before, so you converted the CDA to a JSON representation, you can now apply this fire string directly in Nikolai's validator or for the VS code extensions, for example, you can also there have a utility. There are different utilities available where you directly and interactively can test out your fire pass uh, rules and look that you have getting the right thing back. So this brings us back in kinds of what we can do with the CDA logical model. And what we wanted to do now is we want to use maps to transform with this logical model CDA to fire and back. The fire mapping language itself is part of the specification of the fire specification also. And it has on one way a concrete syntax and it has a abstract syntax, which is the structure map resource. So there are different mapping engines available. So there is a, the Java fire mapping. This is um, also in the Java core library. Um, it's also exposed through the Java validator where you can transform the maps, but there is also on the C, um, there's also a C sharp mapper, uh, which is uh, available with the Wonk Fire server setup. There are also other projects. There is a JavaScript project, and I think there is even a Pascal uh, implementation. So what you do then is you first have to author these maps. So you uh, make instructions to transform the source content to the target content. And then you can create the machine readable representation of the mapping instructions in the form of a fire resource. There are um, also uh, services available so that you can use a dollar convert operation that you can directly convert this map to the equivalent structure map resource. And then if these structure maps are stored on a fire server, you have an additional operation, the transform operation. And with this, you can then transform the source content 
to the target content. So you can feed in this operation, a CDI document and transform it afterwards. And then you should get back, a, a, for example, a bundle if you have the correct maps. So we said before, this mapping should be done at the uh, CDI template level rather than at the CDI specification. So that's what we also followed up on our Swiss projects. Um, there were made uh, during all these developments, uh, also with the CCDI developments, there were already some elementary mappings available for CDI to fire types and also for CDI to bundle. And we expanded on that now in our context that we covered our Swiss base specification. So we made from our uh, national CDI implementation guide, we started to do maps which can con convert them to equivalent CH uh, core bundles. But then we had to go into specifying our maps directly for each um, document type we develop in the CDI world. So we have a medication card document, um, which is a CDI specification, and we developed now maps to explicitly map each entry inside that. So first we have a medication card document. So and then you see here now the corresponding map it takes in. So you define for maps groups. Uh, you have a source, which is a clinical document. We have a target, which is a bundle. And then you have the different mapping rules. So the time is too short to give you an introduction how this mapping syntax works. But there is for the fire mapping language also a tutorial if you want to follow up. And there are also at the HS7 virtual connectatons, there is a fire mapping language track if you are interested in. And also for the Let's Tutorial build session tomorrow, if you have any questions, we can also have a quicker look into the maps because I think here it's, it would be too complicated to go to all the features of the fire mapping language. When you go then from this document level, you go down through the body of the CDI document. So you iterate over the structure body of a CDI document. And then you catch the section, which is uh, in CDI indicated with the template ID. So, and if you have the, this specific section with this OID, so that would be in the fire world now an HTTP URL, um, but in the CDI world, we have this OID, then the equivalent section can now be mapped. And the next mapping is called until we get down to the entry level. And there you see that then afterwards um, from a source substance administration, we can then map that now in our use case to a medication statement and add all this information which uh, we need in our new fire representation. So this you can also do with the Java validator as indicated before. You see here an example. This is also what we will be doing during the Let's Build tutorial. So all these steps you have seen before, this is available for you to do an exercise. And there are also hosted versions to do it faster. So we can also make this transformation directly on a server. So here to the right, you see an example how this CDI document now gets transformed into a bundle according to the uh, rules of the maps. If you are interested in more of this topic, there are different Zulip streams. So there is a CDI stream on Zulip, there is a CCDI stream, CDI to fire stream, CDI publish and mapping framework stream. So please, as uh, Zulip is available via chatfire.org if you don't know that uh, already. So please register and ask a question there or um, join the Let's Build tomorrow or ask a question here after the session. So I hope I could show you 
during this presentation the relation between the this CDI and FIRE documents, that these are not two completely different things, that there are approaches how we can map the information which is avail available in CDI to FIRE and back, that we can even use this logical model to validate CDI, to extract information from it, and to use then the FIRE mapping language to convert data from CDI to FIRE. And if you have maps also from FIRE to CDA back also. We have tested this in Switzerland during the last projectathon. So um, in context of the development of our e-medication architecture, we have systems which will provide CDA and which will consume only FIRE and the other way around. So we did some first testing. It was successful. We still have to improve the specification as well as the mapping and we have also to look into a few performance issues but I think we are on a first step here and I'm eager to learn of you uh, or interested if somebody else has also made already experience. So thank you for your attention. Um, if you want to join tomorrow you see here the link or it's also uploaded to Whova for the tutorial and looking forward to see you. So if you so have Paul any- Paul for this is Michael. And yeah, there's a ton of questions in the Q&A. And uh, since we have so much time, we could also allow people to talk or unmute and, and ask their, their question. But we'll first go through the Q&A that's on the, uh, in the Q&A session. So I'll, I'll go ahead and read them out to you if you like. In real-world mm -hmm. applications, the fire mapping language often imposes limits for loops with running variables, for instance. Uh, that makes its use not feasible. Is extensibility of the language planned for the future for use cases like this? I, I'm not sure if I can answer that question completely. Uh, yes, the fire mapping language has a few, um, how you call it, peculiarities. Um, so uh, Graham uh, was the founder of this in, uh, together with, oh, I don't remember um, his name. Um, I'm not sure if he's in this session, so maybe he could add to that. So I think because of specific reasons for the language, not everything is allowed. So I'm not sure if this um, indexing issue or this limitation that you cannot use it is uh, because of the language construction or because it is not, uh, was not thought of. So I think that would be a good point to bring this up on the Sulip stream that we maybe can get the extension also. I know there are a few um, changes in FireEye discussed to the fire, uh, fire mapping language. So for example, also that you can assign a, a variable to it. So I think the language is still in evolution and I think you need, need to engage with the community and the, the standardization community to bring such issues inside. Very good. Are there standard maps available? For example, given a CDA document, we get a map of what resources will be used? Um, so, no, I don't think that's really feasible. So we, there are these standard maps available where you can uh, go from a CDA document to a bundle with the composition inside. And I think as soon you want to go deeper, you would need a specific. So, I mean, like they did for CCDA, they started doing that, what this question goes into it, like in Switzerland, where you have a harmonization of sections, you can do that, yeah. But at the moment, I'm not aware of any maps which go already into a general mapping, and I don't think it's possible. You can do this by a section level, you could that approach, but I mean, there are so many sections in the world of CDA, I don't think there is a general map which will cover all sections, or at least I'm not aware of at the moment. Okay, very good. Next question, is this available in .NET Core? 
yes, there is. A, um, so uh, .NET Core, I know there is an add-on extension to the Wonk server. So um, I'm not a .NET specialist, so I don't know if this meant .NET Core or not, but this is a commercial add-on. So yes, so the fire mapping language implementation is available uh, or an implementation exists for the .NET. Um, I think Alexander Zauke is um, also very involved in this topic. So you maybe can ask him later on um, uh, how the support is in that area. All right, very good. Next question, how do you check that your CDA document is converted correctly to a fire resource? <laughs> um, so that's a good question. Um, I mean, this the correctness is maybe on different levels. So, so one thing is if this is afterwards a correct resource in the sense that it's uh, correct according to the profile you want to have it specified with all the rules that may, um, this is one part, but then the other part I think which is also important is that you um, take out the correct information uh, and transform it into the right uh, way in the fire uh, representation. So what you can do to help for that is that you have uh, first the implementation guide, what you want to achieve, then, then you can check the result afterwards um, um, if this is really correct, this representation, for example, with the validator. And I think the second important step is you have to define which, like a clinical uh, data elements, which kind of elements you want to have guaranteed transformed from the CDA to fire and back. So I think it's really important. You can, you are not converting models here. You are converting um, data elements which have different representation in different standards. And if you have these data elements, then you can also verify and check that these are mapped back and forth. A simple approach to do that is um, what we try now in Switzerland is that uh, we make the um, transformation in one way and in the other way back and we compare that the uh, transforming it into the fire world, checking there that it's conformant against the profile and transforming it back and checking that the CDI documents are the same so we know that the information got not lost doesn't give you 100% completeness. That's also why um, we try to test that in real life at projectathons, but that's the approach we have taken till now. Okay. Next question. Can you give an estimate of the time it took to make this mapping, uh, both man hours and lead time? Um, huh. So I think there is a steep learning curve uh, for the mapping language a bit, which will take you a few man hours. And, but if you can start from existing maps, I think it will go faster. So I would say it's in the range of starting new for the CDA documents, maybe in a person weeks if this is a, so we paid a learning curve, I think. So we had, uh, I think more than a month uh, of work, but on the other hand, we now added another type of document, um, which was honestly a bit similar, but has other resources and then was then done in, within days. So I, I think it depends a little bit on your familiarity with the standards and using the tools. But it's not something you do just in a few days. That's not the case. Okay, next question. I have an XML XSD schema used in some health institutions. Is there a way to check that it is derived from CDA? Um, 
No idea. No idea. I mean, you can look at it if you, I mean, the CDI schema is quite explicit when you look inside how this naming is with the, where it's derived from. So if your XSD schema is in the health institution is following this V3 naming conventions, I would guess you are maybe pretty close and otherwise uh, I would be lost. No idea. <laughs> okay. All right, very good. Uh, I mean, you can valid. Um, sorry, you can validate an XML just against the CDI schema. So, if your example XML you have from this institution validates against the regular CDI, you at least know that it is conformant to CDI. Okay. All right. Next question: Would it be possible to imagine transformation from Art Decor templating uh, to Fire implementation guide? Yes, I guess, but <laughs> so, um, and actually uh, in the US, they have a project like this. So this Trifolia workbench, they are using now um, based on the CDI logical models, um, uh, you can derive additional CDI specification and this will up in a fire implementation guide. And I know that also the Art Deco team was working on that. We tried, um, 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 we were looking also a uh, year, uh, a little bit into this. Um, Alexander Henket was also working on this, but I'm currently, I'm not up to date how far we are there yet. So uh, the best thing would also to be ask, uh, it might be in the CDI stream and we look that we get Alexander's extension for um, attention for this question. Okay, very good. All right, next question. Is there any open source or repository available where we can access to different types of CDA document example slash documents? Um, yes, yeah, so um, I can add the link later on. For example, in Switzerland for all, all our CDI specifications, we have the Swiss CDIs. I don't know how helpful that is. I know that Josh in the US um, also assembled different documents. So there are multiple CDI documents available. So the question is here more, what kind of CDI document you, you want to have as an example or documents, but I, I can add some links afterwards, which I know of. All right, very good. Next question is, in CDA world, we have the no flavor values in fire world, say in a scenario for observation status, which is mandatory, if we encounter such no favor, flavors, how did you handle to such cases? Oh. Yes. So this goes a little bit um, back to my um, original comment that we should handle the, the clinical information which you want to transform. And then you have certain things in the standard, like a CDI standard, for example, like null flavors or context conduction or stuff, which you just cannot in generally model. So I think you will have look at it by case by case, what that would mean in your CDI specification and how you could map then afterwards this um, null flavor concept in, in the FIRE world because FIRE has a different concept. So I, I cannot give a general answer for that. So um, you need to uh, specifically use at that template, I guess. Okay, very good. Last question uh, due to time, but there is additional question in there that you might wanna look at uh, on your own. There, Oliver, but uh, how do we handle mapping from unstructured CDAs? Uh, so there, I mean, it's quite easy. You would just map it to a, uh, or I would map it just to a bundle with a composition inside and uh, do this narrative conversion. So the question is more how much help this is then, but um, I think that could be a first preliminary approach. All right. Now we're at the top of the hour. so. That's the end of this session. So thanks Thank for guiding all. me for all these questions and thanks for holding on. All right, have a good day. You too. Thanks.